Good day, RGV. Today on Valley Por Vida, we're talking April Fool's Day. We're talking heroes who help give the gift of life, introducing you to our pet of the week, and so much more. The show starts right now. Hi there, and thanks again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda, and I've got some advice for you, okay? On this April Fool's Day, believe nothing and trust no one. <laughs> now, the origin of this day is debated, but RD.com says that it started off as families playing pranks on each other, then it moved to the workplace and kind of just expanded from there. And it's a day that many enjoy while many dread. <laughs> but no matter what side you're on, it's a good idea to just be extra aware today. And we're going to go ahead and give you a little bit of background on the holiday in today's Fun Facts segment. All right, so according to History.com, historians have associated April Fool's Day to fest festivals that used to be celebrated in ancient Roma. There, were one, there was one festival, rather, for, uh, for example, and it was called Hilaria, which <laughs> is a Latin term meaning joyful. And it involved people dressing up in different disguises just for fun. The site says that it even inspired Egyptian legends to get involved in the holiday as well. People would be you know, known to just mock fellow citizens, and it kind of just blew up <laughs> evolving throughout the years. And the site outlines that the day was actually uh, tied to the vernal equinox, which is the first day of spring in the northern hemisphere. So people usually just fooled around and fooled people, you know, using the unpredictable weather uh, to, you know, their advantage when it comes to jokes and different tricks. And the concept for this day later spread throughout Britain during the 18th century, and in Scotland, uh, the tradition even ended up spreading to two-day coverage because it was that much fun. <laughs> the site says that people were sent on phony errands and this is actually the time uh, that kick me signs became popular. <laughs> Plus it outlines that the phase or the phrase gawk is a word referring to the cuckoo bird or the cuckoo bird and uh, that bird is just a symbol for fool which is pretty interesting to know. <laughs> and the site says that people used to go uh, to really great lengths to pull off the perfect April Fool's Day prank. In fact, many would go to newspapers, radio, and TV stations uh, to report untrue stories, which is not necessarily a great scenario. And the site says that the fast food chain Taco Bell was really in on the holiday in the past, so much so that they even fooled the public when they made an announcement saying that they had purchased the Philadelphia Philadelphia Liberty Bell and then renamed it to the Taco Liberty Bell. <laughs> and the Burger King also has been on April in on April Fool's Day pranks in the past as well. The site says that they advertised a left-handed Whopper, which many people believed and just ended up asking for it at their restaurants. <laughs> Not to mention our friend Google. They have held many an April Fool's Day prank, <laughs> including one that went down in April Fool's Day history when they said <laughs> that there was such a thing as a telepathic search that we could use online to play Pac-Man on Google Maps. See, it's kind of funny and fun to be silly uh, and to have a dedicated day just to funny games and tricks as long as they don't go too far. But it's also important to be solemn and respectful Sorry. when necessary. One event that requires this type of reverence was a ceremony held by Texas Organ Sharing Alliance, a wall of heroes dedication uh, to honor heroic donors. It was a special tribute to honor selfless individuals who gave the gift of a life, and we dropped by their location to learn more about why it was so important, as well as how we can take part in their mission.
Uh, our Wall of Heroes celebrates organ donors from Central and South Texas um, since the beginning of our organization's establishment in 1975. So we've got about over 3,000 names, donor heroes, who have given the gift of life. And we've got these different panels that have these medals that are silver, silver medals. They move with the wind. It's um, a very calming area to be in, in our donor memorial garden. To hear the chiming sound of these medals moving, it's just a great uh, environment to be in to celebrate organ donors and the gift that they have given through the gift of uh, organ donation. And this event was to honor our 2021 donor heroes. We had a record-breaking 260 people become organ donors in our service area. So we put up those medals on Sunday with the help of their families. Uh, they got to put the name of their loved one on that wall um, to be able to thank them and to participate in this gift of life uh, through organ donation. And we had um, a great turnout for people who came out to celebrate their loved one. Um, many of them, of course, were here from the Valley. It's really, the, the idea of the Wall of Heroes was not just to celebrate organ donors and, and the gift that they have given, but to also remind everyone of the critical need that we have for organ donors in our community. This wall is meant to be a place where family members, uh, even our staff can come and reflect on the power of organ donation and that was, that is meant for. When you come into our building, when you leave our building, you're going to see this wall and it really is a magical space to be in, to be able to celebrate organ donation and, and to really highlight how important it is to be able to give the gift of life. All of these medals have the names of donor heroes. We have space for about 6,000 donor heroes um, and it really is just remarkable to see how each of these names represents someone who saved at least one person's life and people have been given a second chance at life thanks to, that, thanks to them. A tribute to our donor families and our donors, of course, and we've got um, pavers where people can come and sit and reflect and, and think about their loved one or think about their donor hero if they're a recipient or uh, either our staff member or someone who's waiting for a transplant just to think about the people who have given the gift of life. We also have eight ornamental flowering trees that are in this garden that symbolizes the eight lives that you can save through the power of organ donation. And it's our spot to be able to, to celebrate organ donors. It was the most important piece of our new uh, building that we just got uh, created about two years ago. Uh, of course, this is our first event that, um, because of COVID we've been closed. And so this is the first time to be able to invite our, our families to come out and see the wall, uh, to find their loved one's name, to put their loved one's name on the wall, and just to reflect on you know, the power of organ donation and the gift that we can give. Of course, this wall of heroes and, and having families come back to the valley and telling their loved ones, their friends, and their families about being able to put a medal with their loved one's name on the wall will help inspire other people to consider organ donation. Last year, we had a record-breaking year here in the Rio Grande Valley. We had 35 individuals say yes to organ donation. Many of them were registered, which is really important. See, heroes come in all sorts of forms, from our men and women in service to our medical professionals to our first responders, and a lot of times even in our pets. Pets can be used to physically heal us as well as emotionally enrich our lives. There is something quite beautiful about opening your arms, your home, and your life to a furry friend. Welcoming them as a family member is so rewarding for both parties. In fact, there is one pet that's in need of a loving home right now. And we drop by to introduce you in today's Pet of the Week segment sponsored by Best Friends Animal Society.